We are in our, um, still in our, uh, our message series, The Power of Heaven. I want to share some uh, um, testimonies from Revival Kids. Can I do that with you? I was going to tell them, but I would butcher them. Um, so Miriam is here. Miriam's our Revival Kids director. Hallelujah. I think I'm on. I'm on. Yes, hallelujah. So, um, so when I was in Mexico, I didn't talk about you guys at all. Nothing personal. I talked about what's going on on the other side of that wall. And the point is, um, you know, we believe in one God. Right? He's, he's, he's presented himself, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He's three in one. But we have one God. Um, there's no junior version of himself that he gives to kids, right? He doesn't hold back certain things from the kids. Doesn't hold back his love. Doesn't hold back his nature. Doesn't hold back his kingdom. And uh, it's funny when you tell people that they get all of God, they believe it. Unless they've been trained otherwise. And so our kids just believe it. Amen. Yeah, that's good. And you're like, well, what does that mean? Hold on. So last week, you guys were teaching. What was the lesson on last week? Um, we were teaching about prophecy. So they had already learned about the ABCDs of prophecy, which stands for always build up, cheers up, and draws near. So they were learning about the Did you get a that? Did you get that? <laughs> That's the ABCs at Revival Life Church. <laughs> About prophecy. And that'll, that'll preach, though. Go ahead and say that again. The always, always builds up, cheers up, and draws near. And then, so we were learning last week about the EFGH of prophecy, which is experience friendship with God in heaven. <laughs> That's what I learned in uh, Children's Church. How about you? <laughs> Experiencing friendship with God in heaven. That's exactly... We teach kids about Noah's Ark, like the mass murder of the majority of the planet. Let's teach them that. Let's not teach them about the living God. Let's teach them a bunch of lessons that aren't actually applicable today. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, so at the, end of the, at the end of the lesson, we wanted them to experience it. So we had an activation, which is basically giving them a chance to experience what they learned. So we... <laughs> so we just played some instrumental music for about five minutes, and some of them wanted to keep going. Um, but basically, most of them got visions. Now, I heard that our kids like to soak. They like to soak, yeah. What, what does that mean? What, what, what does that mean, they like to soak? What does that, what does that look well, like? Well, they, they love... One time I asked them, like, is there a song that, that really, you know, makes you feel God? And then we played that song, and they just kind of laid on the ground, and... And they just soak. They just like soak in God's presence and they love doing that. <laughs> I do too. I, I call that nap time. <laughs> what was the song? Do you remember? Um, Out of Hiding by Stephanie Gretzinger. Wow. That's the one they like. <laughs> they okay, go they deep. go deep. All right. Deep. And so, and so, <laughs> wow. Uh, okay, so you, 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 you taught uh, on EFGH, experiencing friendship with God in heaven. And then you wanted them to actually experience friendship with God in heaven, right? Yes. And so you did what? So we had them soak, and then a lot of them got visions. So there was one little boy that got a vision of angels all over the church. Um, another little girl got a vision of a building with people in it. And this one rocked me because she said I didn't, it didn't make sense to her. It didn't make sense to me when she told me. So she said, so I asked God, God, what does this mean? Why are you showing this to me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good question. Yeah. Right? And then she said, then God told me that I'm that strong building for people to go into. <laughs> <laughs> Um, three of the girls, one of them is a junior helper, um, they, all, they all went to heaven and they saw each other in heaven. <laughs> and then another little girl, <laughs> she, um, she told me she saw Jesus and Jesus took her by the hand and took her to this place that she couldn't really define other than she said it was kind of like a castle. And Jesus took her to this table sat her down, and there was a feast for her to eat. I feel like I read about that somewhere. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to see that table one day, and I'm going to eat there with you. How about that? Amen. Come on. No, that's good. That's a Corey. Come on. Give it up to Miriam. Out there doing work. 
And it's all because of you, right, Miriam? It's all because of you. Hallelujah. That's good. I feel like if you only got that today, I'd like, amen, let's stand and we'll just pray. We could go home. I feel like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H was enough. I feel like that was enough, Corey. Wow. Wow. Okay, here we go. All right. All right, we're in our Power of Heaven message series, and, um, and uh, I want to share a real quick scripture. If you've got a Bible, you can turn to Mark chapter 3, but it's going to second before I get there. Um, <clears throat> I, I, um, wow. Ha. Ha. Um, we're not supposed to be marked by what we hate, but we, what we love, but there's certain things I hate. Um, <clears throat> and they kind of mark what I do. I hate lying. Let me say it differently. I hate being lied to. <laughs> right? Well, I, I try not to lie, you know. But I, I hate being lied to, and uh, I hate hypocrisy with a passion. Hypocrisy um, uh, really, really sets me off. It sets off my internal need for justice uh, and my desire for justice. Um, I don't play well with others when we're all winking at hypocrisy together. Um, I, I have a problem with that. And I'm uh, no respecter of persons when I will let people know that I believe they're being uh, uh, hypocritical. Um, that has kept me from... Um, certain networks and uh, certain relationships where people wanted me to join into their hypocrisy and I just can't do it. Um, Chris is having a good time. That's Mike Rentler. Is that Mike Rentler? Can you go tell Mike Rentler, uh, Hoffa, for me that, um, yeah, I, I'm the only one with a microphone in this service. She knocked as if they're going to say, who is it? <laughs> we can solve this problem. Just when you fill out your check, million has two L's in it. And we can solve all these problems so easily. We're just waiting on you. So, um, so <clears throat> Jesus really meant the stuff that he, whoa, that he said. He meant all the stuff that he said, and it's really important, it's really important that um, there's a big challenge these days where people, um, they don't want us to share too much of God's goodness because they think if you tell people that he's that good, they won't actually want to follow him. So you have to like make up the rules that he never talked about because then they'll want to follow him. It's really a weird paradigm. Um, and so Ephesians 6, 10 in, in Ephesians, right around um, the middle of, of chapter 5, right around, don't quote me on this, somewhere around verse 19, 20, somewhere around there, um, Paul in Ephesians talks about, um, he says, don't, drunk, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit, right? Now, that, that verse is not about drinking, that, that verse is about what it means to be filled with the Spirit. And now, then he goes on to talk about there's five characteristics of being filled, Right, but be filled with the Spirit, you know, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, um, submitting yourselves one to another. And then he goes to talk about what it looks like to be filled with the Spirit in a marriage relationship, what it means to be submitted one to another, what it means to be filled with the Spirit in raising your kids and not provoking your children to wrath, but blessing. And then he talks about what it, what it even means to your subordinates, how you even are supposed to submit one another to your subordinates. It's really, it's really Paul was writing about how everything gets flipped now that the Holy Ghost has come. Right? And so then he talks about what it means to follow God and then he gets to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. I didn't lose you guys, right? We're still together. Then he gets to Ephesians verse, verse, uh, 6, verse 10. He says, finally, he's kind of finishing up what this means to be filled with the Spirit. He says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. And I feel like a lot of us just use that verse to kind of rebuke fear. Like, I'm not scared. I'm strong in the Lord. Like, that's not what that verse is talking about. That, that verse actually means being strong in the Lord and the strength of His might. Now, I've, um, I said this last service that I may commission Lillian to be a missionary to the back of the church. 
to share the presence and the joy of the Lord with the frozen chosen. I may send her out. The elders of the church may lay hands on her. And she may go to a people that she does not know. Who speak a tongue she does not understand. Mm. And let them know the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so I, I believe um, we get confused. On, see, I, I think like, you remember when you got saved? Remember when you first met Jesus? Do you remember? If you can't remember, we're going to have some people right here at the end of service. And they'll help you remember because today can be the day. Amen? Hallelujah. <clears throat> um, I, think we, I think we really devalue our conversion experience. Um, I think we sometimes think it's just a doorway. And I feel like um, I believe that a lot of times God gives us the most pure revelation at our conversion because we don't have a religious filter for it yet. And so he speaks things into our heart at our conversion that are really a roadmap to the rest of our spiritual life. The Lord often in that very first season of Christianity gives us seeds in, in the way of experience, in the way of revelation, in the way of relationships that are uh, for a harvest in a, in a later season. And we think that it's a harvest right then, like it's just going to continue to increase, and often it kind of dies out, and we're like, wow, what happened? I walked in this thing. And, I, and I'm absolutely convinced that that is a seed that we're supposed to hold on to. And um, sometimes in life, sometimes in life, you know, we can, we, can, we can go down what we believe to be the right road for a long time. Not, not sin, not like leaving the Lord behind, but we can march down a long road, and then we can get to a certain point and be like, how did I get here? This, is, this was never where I was trying to go. We were just journeying, journeying, thinking, you know, it, with, a, with a right heart, trying to journey with the Lord. And then we just wake up one day and we're like, how did I get here? And why am I no closer to that thing you showed me a long time ago, right? And, um, and I think it's really, really, really important that we revisit the, the, the early things that the Lord spoke to us. Now, now, when I'm confused and I'm like, and I'm, and I'm journeying with the Lord in something, and then I'm like, how do we get here? I like to look back and say, okay, what did he first tell me to do? Is, 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 is what I'm doing now still lining up with that? Does this make sense? What did he first tell me to do? Is this lining up with, with that? And if you do that long enough, you'll, you'll learn to kind of, there's this story about the ostrich. Now, the ostrich um, does, has, has, a, has, has a, the, among the smallest brains in the animal kingdom, right? They have very, very tiny brains. They're, they're, they're not bright animals. Uh, and they bury their eggs. And they don't have the capacity to remember where they bury their eggs. And, you know, their eyes can move independently. And so when an ostrich lays an egg and buries it and they go off to find food, they always keep one eye on the egg so they know where to go back to. They always keep one eye on the eggs so they know where to go back to. And so the first things that God tells you, the foundational thing, we need to keep our eye on it at all times. That way we know if we're journeying, we're still connected to the actual call. Does, does, does this, is this making sense? And so I like to try to, you know, say, okay, is this lining up? Um, and so often in our um, walk with Jesus, we can just get separated from that. Uh, in our ministry lives, we start to let other things define success, um, and, uh, and we find ourselves in a place we never intended to be. Good places, maybe, sometimes not good places, uh, but because we didn't keep our eye on the thing that God originally said. And so um, I, 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 want to, I say that to say, we can start Christianity in the spirit and end up in the flesh super, super easy. We can start Christianity thanking Jesus that he saved us and set us free from our sin, and we can wind up in a place where our entire Christianity is about me living free from sin. Now, I, I believe in holiness. I really do. I believe, I believe that I'm supposed to live holier today than I did yesterday. I believe that sin is bad. I believe that hell is real, right? So I'm just, I'm not making up some new doctrine here. I just believe that Jesus actually saved us from those things, and Jesus actually is the sanctifier. Jesus is the one who sets you apart from your sin. John the Baptist, the first things he said about him was, Behold, the Lamb of God who, what? Takes away the sin. Not the Lamb of God who comes and then you'll have to start dealing with your sin. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the, who takes away the, sin of the world. 
And we can lose track of that so, so easy. And everything in life becomes about how well am I doing in this thing? Instead of how amazing is God in this thing? Instead of, man, Jesus really is the sanctifier, even in the midst of my struggle, it becomes about how well am I dealing with this struggle? Is this making sense to anybody in the room? Because Christianity can start like, man, I'm just so glad I'm saved. I'm so glad that he saved me. And it can, and it can, and it can, it can devolve into how well did I do it this week? Right? It could so easily become, how, did, how well did I do it this week? Um, and, and Christianity was never supposed to be about us. That's why it's not called Carlianity. It's not, it's not called Corianity. It's not called Uianity. It's Christianity. It's about Christ. Does this make sense? There was a religion that was based on keeping laws, and Jesus said that one's now done. Right? There's now one about Jesus having victory over the devil. And it's so easy to find ourselves somewhere we never intended to be, Hoffa. Am I making sense yet? And Paul is trying to tell people, listen, you get filled with the Spirit, and we need to be strong in the Spirit. And, and, and if you're in a place today of like, where am I going or what happened or am I... I want, you, I, want to, I, want to, I want to challenge you. Go back to the first thing. Go back to first things. Go back to the first thing. What did God speak over you? What did John the Baptist speak about Jesus? What did Jesus say about himself? Instead of, instead of getting caught up in who you are and who you're not, get caught up in who Jesus is. Get, get caught up in the first things. Is this, is this making sense? Um, and I, and I, just, I just, I, um, I, I find... You know, I've been walking this thing out a minute. You know, many of you have uh, been in Christ longer than me. Many of you haven't. Um, but the, 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 more, the longer I follow Jesus, the less I'm interested in how I'm doing. Because I can always find where I'm coming up short. I've never took a look inward and said, hey, it looks like everything's fine. <laughs> That's never happened to me. If that's happened to you, man, bless you and your deception. But for me, for me... I can't take a deep dive in Carl and come out happy, right? I take a deep dive in Jesus, I come out pretty happy. Right? I mean, yeah, yeah. Always building courage and I don't know, what was ABCD? I got to learn that. That was good stuff. ABCD. Always building, cheering, and, and, and rebuking, right? Rebuking, because that's part of it, right? No, no, drawing near to God. No, 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 no. We need to tell him that God hates you because you're terrible. So run to him before he kills you. Right? Isn't that what we're supposed to be telling people? He hates you because you're so awful. That's why he sent Jesus. I'm sorry. I'm raining in here. Rain it in, Carl. Listen, I'm almost done, which is not true. Mark chapter 3. Let's take a look here. Lily, just let it fall. She interrupted my servant, my message last service. <laughs> Did anybody have visions in worship, by the way? Can you wave a hand at me if you got visions in worship today? You got one? You got some? 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 Oh, yeah. Come on. Can you put them high for me? I want the rest of you to feel bad. I know. I don't want to, actually. No. I want you to feel like you could, though, in the future. I should get at least as much as a four-year-old, right? Like, they're not even tithing. They're not even tithing. And they're getting all that, Brent. What's up with that? You ever been, like, in a hard place in your mind, God, that you've been tithing? And I've been tithing for two months, and I'm going through this. Is that just me? I've done that. Okay. I've done that. Mark chapter 3, starting in verse 13. It says, Jesus went up on the mountain, and he summoned those whom he himself wanted, and they came to him. I, I, need you to, I need you to hear this real quick. Has anybody heard him call you? Has anybody heard him tell you, like, have you seen him? Yeah. Have you seen him? Anybody in here, have you encountered him? The Bible says right here why he did it. He summoned those 
who he himself, what? You're actually wanted. You're actually wanted by God. He summons you because he actually, he, actually, he actually wants to be with you. He actually wants you, right? You're not a mistake. You're not a failure. You weren't a surprise when you showed up on the scene. God wasn't shocked when you were born. Like, oh, what do I do with this one, right? Like, he actually knew you, right? He wants you. You actually look like your daddy in heaven, right? And like, you're wanted. He went up on the mountain, and he summoned those who he himself wanted, and they came to him. And he appointed 12 so that they could be with him and that he could, wow, mm, woo, there's something. And he could send them out to preach and to have authority to cast out demons. Now, it's really easy to let our call drift from Jesus to the stuff he tells us to do, right? Because if you're saved, I'm actually trying to touch you on purpose. We're doing this little knee game, and I'm like, no, I'm actually here on purpose. <laughs> he went up on the mountain and summons those who he... This is about as good as it's going to get, all right? So just try to receive from the Lord. I don't have any real clever stuff that I'm going to share with you later. Like, this is it, right? So I want you to really receive from the Lord. He went up on the mountain and summoned, from, summoned those who he himself wanted and they came to him and he appointed 12 so they could be with him that he could send them out <clears throat> your first call i want you to see this is to be with jesus your first call is to be with jesus he summons them it says those whom he wanted who he himself wanted that they came to him and he appointed them so that they would be with him and he could send them out with him and send them out. And we get so caught up in the sending out and what we're called to do with our life and what we're trying to accomplish, um, uh, it, it sometimes clouds out to being with him. Wow. Is this making sense? It's not as fun without Lillian losing it on the front row. She decided to get off the front row and be with him. It's not activation time, Lillian. And he appointed 12, and he appointed 12 so that they could be with him and that he could send them out to preach and to have authority and to cast out the demons. Now, our first call, it's so easy to forget our first call to be with him. Duke can just focus on what we're called to do, right? It's really easy to be like, yeah, I know I'm saved, but now I'm supposed to be doing this because I'm saved. And then all of a sudden, our whole relationship with God becomes about what he's called us to do, even, even in our own life. Hear me. I don't like sin. Sin is bad. Sin makes us stupid, right? And sin makes us ugly, right? Sin makes people ugly, and it makes them stupid. You can see, just look at Instagram. Look at Instagram. And you see models on Instagram, you're like, you know, you look nasty, right? You understand that, right? There's like nothing attractive about what you're doing right there. But sin makes you stupid, makes you think this is cute. And you're like, that's not cute. Just get dressed and go to church. <laughs> Doesn't even have to be in that order. Just go to just, you need Jesus, right? Because that's not cute. And that thing doesn't fit, right? Like someone needs to tell you. Someone needs to be friend enough to tell you that thing don't fit. That's the wrong size. They need to tell them this, yeah, they're just, that don't fit. Because <clears throat> sin makes you stupid, right? And it makes you ugly. And um, when you come to Christ, like, right? Are you, you're with me, right? You're with me. And so when we come to Christ, all of a sudden we have this new revelation coming into our, wow, this, this new authority coming into our life that actually I don't have to figure it out. See that's, see, that's what it looks like when you figure it out. That's what it looks like when you figure it out. When God figures out, it's all of a sudden beauty looks different. Yeah. All of a sudden, you see like a family who like take care of their kids. You're like, wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. Wish I had me some of that. Yeah. Right? It completely changes. 
this, uh, again, this is as good as it's getting right here. Just you got to drink from the Lord, right? So he appointed 12 to be with him. And, and when we get saved, the Lord gives us authority, right? Um, and the first authority he gives us, like, he saves our soul, right? And he activates our spirit, right? And the first thing he gives you authority over is that one square foot that you live inside of called your body. He's like, I've now given you dominion over this. Now go ahead and begin exercising dominion over this. Learn ABCD. Always building, cheering, and drawing near. Like say, live that life. All right? And then enjoying fellowship with God in heaven. Right? EFGH. I'm liking that. I want to be in Revival Kids. I see why all the people serve back there. That's good stuff. And then if we get authority over this right here, then maybe he'll give us, he'll expand our authority out there, right? Follow me for a second. But as you get older in Christ, you're getting more authority because he's expecting you to be growing, right? He just expects you to be growing. And so maybe we'll talk about in the natural sense. All of a sudden, you know, you were just you. Now you have a family. Now maybe you have a house. Maybe, you know, you have kids you have to take care of. Maybe you're a leader in the church. And so your authority, your responsibility has increased. And so, so as, 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 your ability, as your authority is increased, you, you want to begin exercising the authority God has given you in these other realms, right? Like you want to be a godly covering to your family, both husband and wife, and you want to be a godly influence for your children, and you want to serve your, your serving team well, and you want to serve your church well, serve your community well. And, and it's possible, you know, in your sending, you're more thinking about whether you're doing your sending well than you are your being with God well. And you can start judging your worth and your victory over how well you're doing stuff instead of how well you're being with God. D does that make sense? And, uh, and even sometimes, like, like, like I, maybe you didn't have a good week of victory in the things he gave you dominion over, and you start saying, um, because I had a bad week with that, my relationship with God is not good. See, that's backwards. That's backwards. And that's what the enemy wants us to think. The enemy wants us to think that our relationship with God is based on how well I'm doing the things he's told me to do. Now, listen, if you're in sin, I'm not saying it's not a big deal. Stop sinning, right? Um, but, but here's the truth. The truth is my relationship with God has not been that great this week. Therefore, my week has not been that great. I wasn't really focused on Jesus. Therefore, I was focused on me and the week got a little off track. As opposed to the week got off track, therefore my relationship with God was not that great. And so he's told us, you know, he, he called us to him and he sent us out. And so uh, in, in, the, in the going, we need to remember the being. In the going, being sent out with Jesus, we got to remember the being with him. The being with him is the most important thing you can do. Verse 14, he appointed 12 so that they could be with him, say with him. And that he could send them. Say, send them. Man, we have a really high value in this house for being with him. And the wholeness that comes from that. That's good, Pastor. I'm happy because that creates healthy people. We're way, like, we're, we're, we're way more interested in are you able to resolve conflicts with other people than we are, are you able to lay hands on the sick and they recover? Because not for nothing, I don't know if you heard, we got five-year-old prophets. The five-year-old prophets, Mike. The teenagers in this church get so many prophetic words. They want to tell them during worship. I'm like, I'm sorry. I need to be worshiping now. I have to preach. Like, I cannot hear all these prophetic words. They're amazing. Write them down. Make them a song. Draw a book. Do something. I actually have to worship because I'm at work right now. I got to get some stuff done here. And so then we get, you know, folks who don't really understand our culture come in and they're like, hey, look, I have all these gifts in my bag. We're like... That's, whoa, those are neat. And they're, they're kind of like the teenager want me to, like, ooh, that's neat. Five-year-olds. Yeah. Are you able to resolve conflict with other adults? Are you able to be humble and serve? Are you, are you able to usher in the presence of God in a way that you can still maintain your relationship with God while still maintaining dominion over the things God has given you dominion over? Are you able to regulate the, the, the affairs of your heart? Are you able to regulate the affairs of your heart? That's like, are you able to be with him? Are you able to be with him? The anointing is the easy part. I say it all the time, because you know, that's all him. 
the, it's the character that's hard. The hard part is walking with people when you get in disagreement. The hard part is like, you know, my wife and I are having a, a bad time. I don't want to go to a therapist because I'm afraid the therapist is going to tell me I'm wrong, but I'm still going to go, right? That, that's, you know, like, it's easy to get married. It's hard to stay married, right? Like, it's really easy to get married. It's super, super easy. Walking that thing out is where both people are prospering is, is complicated, um, where both are prospering. And so, um, <clears throat> the authority that God has given you is rooted in the relationship you have with Jesus. Amen. I don't care how many tricks you can pull. We take people on, you know, Mexico mission trips who never saw a miracle in their life, and they come back saying, I cannot believe I'm doing miracles. This is just like, how did this happen? Because you're around some people who have a relationship with Jesus Christ, the anointing is flowing through you. And that's just how it works. Yeah. That's just how it works. Now it's time for you to walk this thing out. Can you continue to be with Jesus, or does what you've done justify who you are? Right? You can get up here and lead a song and get a prophetic song and do a shred the guitar till nine strings break and, you know, drum heaven down. But, you know, does your wife like you if you're a man? Right? I mean, um, this, this is supposed to be encouraging. I have six minutes. Okay, good. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Doing good. Are we okay so far? Yeah. Okay. So Revival Life Church, I, I've, I, uh, Revival Life Church is, is the name of the church you're in right now. Welcome. If you're looking for the Spanish church, it's one building over. Como estas? <laughs> Bienvenido. Um, re, 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 It's true. It's, it's actually true. It, it's actually, it, yeah, it's actually true. Uh, and, um, and so you may notice a few things in our, in our logo here. Number one, it has the word revival in it. That's not just something we say. It's something we actually believe. We believe we're supposed to live a life in revival. We believe it so much, our cute, fancy logo is a flaming dove. I've seen cool church logos. They're not that. That's ours. A flaming dove. That fire would fall upon you like it fell upon the apostles in the upper room. We believe the things that Holy Spirit released there are available to us. That God didn't actually stop doing stuff. All right. See, when I got saved, they messed up. They messed up. They gave me a Bible and I already knew how to read, right? And so when I started reading the Bible, Duke, I actually believe it. I believe the Bible. Like I believed all the stuff in it. I like the stuff they said about Jesus. I actually believe it. Right? And so um, um, there's a funny, funny group of folks out there today who are Bible people. They're Bible people. People of the Word, Ed. Of the Word. Only the Bible. They even put it... Uh, they, Here's what's kind of funny. They only believe the word. It's only the word. And they have a doctrine. It's called sola scriptura, which is not actually in the Bible. They only believe the Bible, but their biblical doctrine isn't actually in the Bible, which is funny to me. That's funny to me, Mike. That's just kind of stuff that makes me laugh. That's funny to me. That's extra biblical revelation, which they don't believe in. How you work that one out, I'm not exactly sure. Because Jesus never said only the Bible. And so they have this thing about only the Bible. And I'm like, all right, well, let's prophesy and heal people. They're like, oh, oh. I'm like, no, but it's in the Bible. It's actually in the Bible. They're like, well, not that part. I'm like, what are you, wait, 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 is it the, are we following the Bible or are we not following the Bible? I read the book and I saw it in the book and I actually am doing it now. And so I feel like if it's in the book and I'm doing it, 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 might, it might, could be God. It might be God. It might be God. No, 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 not that part. Well, do you have a chart somewhere? Oh, and they got charts. None of them are from the Bible, but they got charts. And they got these, you know, like, tell me which parts I'm supposed to be skipping when we're only doing the Bible, but I'm not listening to parts of the Bible. How does, how does that work out exactly? Oh, I understand. You want me to follow you, not the Bible. Oh, now I get it. Really, what we have, never mind. I'm not going to use that word. But we're going to use man over Bible and call it only Bible. Does that make sense to anybody in here? Don't believe that. I'm going to give you an example of that false theology. Um, 
part of that theology says that tongues are not for today, which is funny because I know people who speak in tongues. In the last service, we had a tongue and an interpretation, which is in the Bible where they say it doesn't happen. It's like saying they don't put out newspapers anymore. It's like, but I have a newspaper. I don't see them. God still does miracles. They'll say, but I've never seen one. I'm like, well, is that probably God's fault or your fault? Let's, let's, let's work this out here a little bit. Let's work this out here. What do you, let's, let's try to figure this part out. Have you prayed for anybody to get a miracle? No, because God doesn't do them. Well, not if you don't pray for them. Let me give you another one that really irks me. I'm in a good mood. I'm in a good mood, Lillian. I really am. I've had an amazing day, much better day than I deserve. But I'm irritated about some things. I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate when they try to subordinate women to men to the point where they say women can't even be anointed by the Lord. I'm like, that's, that's not only extra biblical, that's contra biblical. That's against the Bible. Not only is it not in there, how do you deal with the, the people, the, 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 the prophetesses? How do, you, how, do you, how do you deal with that? Oh, we don't, we don't, oh, so it's not just Bible. Like, you got some scissors out, you got to cut things out of the Bible to, to get your... And I'm like, well, then how do these women preach under the anointing? Oh, it's, it's not God. Well, who, who's leading people to Jesus? The devil? Who's healing these people through their hands? The devil? Is the devil now doing miracles and God's deceiving people by making think, people think that it's him doing the, the healings? Like, what, what kind of mental gymnastics do you have to go through? And we need to let people know, guess what? Your God is bigger than what you've been told about. Jesus actually is alive today. Jesus is actually alive. And they're like, no, no, you can't preach to people in other churches. Actually, the Bible says they showed up somewhere, and they're like, hey, have you received the Holy Ghost yet? They called them disciples. They say, have you received the Holy Ghost? We're like, we ain't even heard about them. They say, well, go talk to your pastor. No, no, they say, listen, we're here to give you the Holy Ghost. I know that because I got them, and you don't. Let's do it right now, right now, right? Like, let's get some apostles here. Right now, right now. Oh, you meant later, later. No, right now, right now. Right now, right now. You could get him right here. He's right here. Okay. I'm almost done. Okay. So he called these disciples to himself. I'm going to rush through this because I feel like you're getting it. And I'm running out of time. Luke chapter 9. He called the 12 and gave them power and authority over. I need you, I need you guys to see this because half the church don't believe this. Gave them power and authority over all, all right? All, what does it say? To over all the demons and to heal diseases. All the demons. Half the church prays like half the demons got all the power. Terrified, rebuking them and pulling them down and pushing them there and working them over. I'm like, you know we have authority over these things, right? I've never once screamed at my car when I turned the ignition, right? Because I have authority over the engine by turning the key. I was like, no, in the name of Jesus. Throw it and drive. Shabbat Tataraba. Ho Ramo go left. I just have, I have, that could be, could be a car. It's a Korean brand. I, 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 I just drive because I have authority. I have authority. But people talk to devils like, like I'm not sure. And so you know the first time like you like go to cast a devil out of somebody and they're manifested and you're like screaming and jumping up and down and spitting things and you're throwing things at them and you're conjuring up every verse you can get and everybody's screaming in tongues as if the devil's hard of hearing, right? Like, let's all scream louder. That'll make them do something. And then you get a little older, you're like, well, Jesus is here, so I guess you have to go now. Wow. And the demons are like, yeah. And they just kind of leave, right? Like, it's... Because you start believing that the all means all, right? So that, that was just the 12, right? But in the next chapter, it says, after this, the Lord appointed 70, I believe it's 72, others, right? So if there's 72 and the 12 and Jesus, right? So we got at least 85 people now doing the stuff, right? And only one of them is actually saved. Jesus, I mean, 
I feel like he was good with the father, right? Right? And so now they're doing the stuff. Right? And here's what he tells them to do. Verse 8. Whatever city you enter, and they receive you, eat what's set before you. Now listen. This is a very, very important caveat. The Greek in this part is not as clear. There's wiggle room in this part because I believe it meant something different in that day and age. They say eat what's set before you. They don't say who set it before you. And let me just give you a warning. If you go to a church in Mexico and they serve you corn soup, which isn't like really corn or soup. It's like they pop the corn and put it in a soup-like thing. And it is a bowl of Montezuma's revenge, right? You can eat the power bar you set before you, right? You don't have to eat that soup. Let the hearer understand. Let the hearer discern what the Lord is speaking in this hour. But he did say in verse 9, heal those who are sick and say to them, now this is super important, say to them the kingdom of God has come near you. Do you understand that where you are the kingdom is? Can you imagine a demon standing in the kingdom of God? They can't. Come on up, Mike. And uh, come up, whoever uh, is going to... Give me some of that microphone there. Give it to Michael. Michael, grab that microphone. Is somebody playing music? That's you, yeah. Just stand over there. You don't even know yet. Are we okay? Are we still friends? Are we still friends? Did it get in the back ever? Or is it, did it just stay up here in Lillian? Okay, good. Good, 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 good. I just feel the back row right over there. From Chris to, from Chris to Porco... To Mike, to Kevin. Yeah, from Kevin to Michael to Porco to Chris. I need you all just to receive it so I can move on. It's all over you there, Mike. It's all over you there, Mike. Come on, come on, Mike. Come on, Mike. It's all on you, Kevin. Go ahead. I hear the Lord saying, dream again, Kevin. I hear him saying, dream again. Is he still upright or is he down? Okay. All right. It's getting hotter, Mike. I'm just going to read this verse here real quick, though. Okay, so we went from... Just the, the, the couple to the 12 he sent out, to the 72. And then we get Mark 16, which is pretty cool because now people can be saved. And he says, to all y'all, say all y'all. That's how Jesus talked. All y'all, go into the world. Whoa, Mike, receive it all. Don't make me come back there. Lily, do me a favor, stand behind Mike there for a second. I know you got to get your daughter, I don't care. Right, right behind Mike. Right there. Fire the Holy Ghost. I feel he's straightening something out right now, Mike. He's straightening something out right now. You can feel your back even beginning to shift. He's straightening something out right now. You feel it shifting? You feel it? He's straightening it out right now. That's, that's a good word. I'll take that. But here's what I really want you to get out of this. Our strength is found in our relationship with Jesus. Our strength is found in our relationship with Jesus. It's not what we can work up and what we can do. It actually is in what, who he is and what he's done. And we need to let the world know about this. Because they've been lied to. They think that they've got to figure it out on their own. Or how they're performing really matters. Our strength is found in our relationship. Here we go. I told you I was going to send her as a missionary. She won't go to Mexico, but she'll go back at the service. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might.
Killian has a box of grant crackers she's going in on. <laughs> and this water bottle. <laughs> Someone is not going to be caught unprepared. Wow. I do, but I'll eat it later. Here's, what I, here's, here's, here's where we're going to land. Here's where we're going to land. Because I'm seven minutes over now. I blame Lillian. Are you getting it, Mike? Did you feel this right now? A little hot? That's good. All right. Here's what I want to do. Um, Shaba. Uh, I, I feel like it's activation time. I feel like you're supposed to experience fellowship with God at Revival Life Church, which is also known as heaven. Not really, uh, but you know. Uh, stand with me if you would. Now, Mike had an encounter with the Lord. Here's what's kind of cool. The Sunday before we left for Mexico, Mike was playing his keyboard, and I saw an angel standing behind him. And I wanted to tell him about it, and the Lord said, he's going to get that angel in Mexico. I was like, that's funny, because I see it right there now, right? But he said he's going to get it in Mexico. Uh, and then something happened in Mexico, and he's going to release it on you. Yeah. Amen. All right, so just get in the place, get ready to receive. Okay, so we were at a prayer meeting in Mexico. Whoa. Ah. And I told God, I said, hey, Jesus, before we start That's really how praying, you talk to him. I said, hey, Jesus. That's how I talk. That's I how we don't talk. doubt that at all. And I'm like, um, <laughs> Father, I want to be in over my head. I want to just be uh, completely consumed. And uh, um, so we started praying. And then Pastor said he saw an angel behind me. And then at the moment, whew, the moment that he saw the angel, I felt a rush of a river just past my knees. Like, just keep sweeping past my knees. And I felt the river. It was tangible. And I was like, uh, no, God, I, I got I to go deeper. I got to go deeper. So what I did was I bent over. And then I let the river just rush over my head. And I was yeah, like, ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh. So I was like, that's really good, Jesus. But I got to go deeper. I got to go deeper. So I got down on my legs like this. And I was like, Jesus, I, gotta, I just got to get deeper. So then the river just overtook me, right? So ah, I felt the river all the way over my head. And I was just, I was completely submerged. Hey, so the moment I stood up Take from it, the river... The moment I stood up from the river, ah, I felt absolutely washed clean. I felt fresh. I felt brand new. I felt like he just, ah, he just took it all away. So I'm just going to pray that over you in the, ah, in the name of Jesus. Get ready to receive. Go ahead. Get ready to receive. Come on right now. I ask you release the river, Jesus. Come on. Ho. Ho. Release the river, Jesus. Oh, release the river, Jesus. Wow. Oh. More, Lord. Come on. Wow. Jesus. Uh, let them be over their heads, Jesus. In over their heads. Now, In now, over their heads. Now the words of knowledge. Come on. Ah. <laughs> okay. About hearts or whatever. Okay. Go ahead. So, um, so we prayed for somebody last week who had a knee problem. And their knee problem got, uh, they came up to me today and they said, hey, for the last week, I have not been dealing with this knee pain that, that, that we prayed for, and it was completely gone. So, hey, if you have any knee problems, we're going to, oh, pray for those to be healed in the name of Jesus. So, Jesus, <sighs> heal, the river. heal their knees. Who needs a river? Come on, this is a learning church here, so we're kind of learning. Who needs the river? Uh, let me see. We don't call it a person. Oh, okay. A situation, oh. maybe, or a... okay. <laughs> so, there's people been dealing with some confusion in this last season, and they're just like, "Man, what, what direction am I supposed to be going in?" And you've actually thought these thoughts, like, "How did I get here?" The river's here for you today. The river will take you where you need to go. The river, and I believe there's someone who's been dealing with some serious headaches, like severe headaches, and they're in their actually connected to anxiety now you wouldn't say you have anxiety but that's actually what they're they're, they're coupled with anxiety because you've been anxious about what is coming 
you just call it tension. And I believe the Lord wants to take you in over your head today. So we release that right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Release the right river, now. Father. We release God. it right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I release the river, Father. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We release it now. Confusion comes we release, off. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Confusion comes off. Headaches and anxiety must disappear in the name of Jesus. Ah, they can't be in the river. Oh, I felt like in Mexico that um, all, the, all those obstacles and all the stuff that the river touches, it has to move. There can be no debris. It's going to, ah, it's going to fall away. In the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Can we give it up for the Lord this morning? Give it up for Pastor Carl's word. Um, I want to invite our ministry team forward. If you're on the altar ministry team here, we're going to have people who would love to pray for you today before you go. If you need prayer for anything, if you need healing in your body, if you just want someone to bless you, just want someone to, to, to maybe you're going through something and, and you just need someone to pray for you, or maybe you're going through nothing and you just want someone to pray for you. Um, if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, we have people up here who would love to pray with you to receive Jesus Christ as your, as your Lord and Savior. You know, we sang that song earlier in the service, which is basically the gospel for the cross. And hallelujah, it is finished. Your sin, he took your sin, he took our shame. He took scars, he took a beating so that we could know the Father and have a relationship with him, amen. Um, real quick before I close you guys, I, 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 while we were praying there a second ago, I just felt like um, God wanted to lift shame um, specifically over people who felt like, man, I've just, I'm ashamed because I, I, I haven't been reading the word enough or praying enough. And I just, and I feel like there's, there's an ungodly shame attached to that. It's like, man, I, I know I should be praying more. Yes, pray more, but God's not shaming you. He's just loving you. I just see the love of God just coming and just lifting the shame. So can we, can we pray that for one second? We just pray that. Father, I just, just command shame to come off now in Jesus' name. I just command shame to come off right now. There's no shame in, in, in knowing you. There's no shame, and you, the word says you put on flesh, and you know everything we go through. And you don't shame us, Father, when, when we don't spend enough time with you. You just call us deeper and remind us how much you love us. You don't shame us. You, you say you're pleased with us. And Father, I just pray that shame would come off and the love of God would draw people into the secret place this morning. The love of God would draw people into your heart. The love of God would draw people into deeper relationship into deeper relationship, into deeper relationship this morning. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. God bless you guys. I love you guys. If you need prayer, come on forward. Let's give it up for Jesus one more time this morning. Have an amazing Sunday. Take someone out to lunch. Go watch some football or take a nap. But have an awesome day, and we'll see you next week. Amen.